This is why I'm never moving back to the US. There. I said it! Cue the dramatic music! Howdy, my name is Kenta. Let me catch you up. I'm a Californian living abroad. I moved from New York City to Berlin a few years ago and recently landed in my new home of Copenhagen, Denmark. When I originally moved out of the US, I was running a digital consultancy, pretty burned out and ready for some change. I thought I'd go across the pond and travel a little bit, see the world. And here I am, stuck inside. Good place to be. Along the way, I did manage to pick up a few things, including an EU visa, which is pretty awesome, uh, less than perfect German, well, enough to order Duna kebab, and also a terrible Danish accent, Suffet. And of course, yeah, a lot of opinions on why, you guessed it, I'm never moving back to the US. Probably. Most likely. We'll see, and here are the three reasons why. One of the main reasons, I, I could actually sum it up in one word, why at least in this part of my life, I would prefer living here in Europe, uh, specifically Denmark, than the US. And that word is, drum roll please, quality of life. Yes, quality of life. It seems that people here in Europe actually care about this word and the systems that are in place both in terms of societal systems but also an important governmental systems regulations things like that not only allow for this but also seems to encourage it so let's dive into this topic of quality of life and why that is the reason why i want to stay here rather than move back to the u.s in three main categories. The first one is healthcare. The second is gonna be work-life balance. And the third one is accessibility. All right, let's dive in. All right, healthcare. So let me tell you the story of when I went to the doctors in Germany for the first time. So I actually had to go see a specialist, a sports doctor for my right shoulder because I did something stupid where my palms were sweaty and I was doing a handstand and I slipped out. Anyways, doesn't matter, but I went to the doctors, I went to a specialist, a sports doctor, and after the appointment and I got some tests, right, and I also needed to do a follow-up, they gave me a referral to a physical therapist as well. I walked up to the counter because that's what you do in the US, right? You're seeing a specialist, even with your regular doctors. I don't know if it's every insurance, but at least from what I remember, I had to go up to the counter and I had to pay something out of pocket. It might've been $20, $40, especially for a specialist. It, it could run you up to like $80. One time I tore my lateral meniscus in New York City and I went to doctors. It was $80 out of pocket just for the doctor to tell me they couldn't do anything for me. And so they just referred me to do another doctor. So I basically paid $80 to be told no and referred to another doctor. So that's kind of the experience that I was expecting. So I did the appointment, I walked up to the counter and I think the lady in the front counter thought I was waiting for a friend because she looked kind of confused, like kind of like, I already helped you, why are you here? And so I just stood there awkwardly for a what felt like minutes actually. Also keep in mind, it, it's like they don't always speak English. So I was like nervous. How am I gonna explain to them that I don't really know what I'm doing there? And finally our eyes locked and she asked me, do you need any help? So my brain was racing because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know how to answer that. Because again, I'm, I'm equally confused. I don't really know what to ask. So I did hesitantly say something like, yes, uh, do I need to pay something? Do I need to do something? And to which she kind of replied, like, again, still confused. Like, didn't I check you in earlier? Didn't you give me your health insurance card? And I said, yes. And then she said, okay, well, then, then no, everything is paid through the health insurance. And that right there, that was a life-changing moment for me. That was like the sum up of what to expect in the German healthcare system, right? Because what you pay is what you get, 
is that the right way to say it? In the US, from my experience, you pay health insurance and then you have some sort of like limit and then you also have to pay up to that limit. So I guess it's called out of pocket. I might be wrong in terms of terminology. But in Germany, what you pay into your health insurance every month, because in Germany, it's this weird hybrid model. I can make another video about German health insurance if you want, but I pay every month and that pretty much covers everything, like most things. <laughs> So yeah, that was awesome because then after that, I went to a physical therapist and again, just gave them a health insurance card and that was it. Here in Denmark, your health insurance is covered through taxes. So that's in some ways even better uh, because you don't really need to think about it. You just need to be mindful that, you know, that's being pulled out of your paycheck. If you're a self-employed person, you need to make sure you set that money aside every month. But other than that, again, everything is paid for. And that peace of mind is golden because I know that my brother, hi, who's editing this video, and my friends, this is a big worry of them when they're not employed, how do I get health insurance? All the clients I work with, it's like, how do I get health insurance? What does that look like? Am I gonna be okay? Do I need a million dollars? You know, if you are chronically ill or have some sort of condition, what does that mean for my life? And what I enjoy about the European system, and again, in terms of quality of life, is it just feels safer because you know that you are covered. You don't need to be filthy rich to make sure that you don't die. And well, that's pretty freaking awesome. And for all of you lovers of private health insurance, they do have that here as well. They have private health insurance and some people do choose to have a little bit of both. Anyways, that's why health insurance is so important and brings such a quality of life because of that peace of mind. You can just book the doctor. Y'all, it's nice, it's nice. Okay, let's move on. Point number two is work-life balance. Oh my gosh, when I lived in New York City, I felt like my entire identity was What's that show on Netflix, Emily in Paris? Well, I remember in that show, someone famously said, in Europe, you work to live, whereas in US, you live to work. And this can't feel true. As an American from the US, living in Europe, I definitely am always surprised when a friend will tell me that they get off at 3 p.m. or during the summer, I notice people just enjoying their life, soaking in the sun in the park, dangling their feet off of the bridge, you know, drinking cold beer or taking a little swim in the canal. And I always, you know, will think like, who are these people? Maybe they're tourists. And to find out that they're just people who are just living here and taking advantage of this beautiful city and its amenities, it, it, it blows my mind. Because in New York City, you'll notice people walking around during the day, but the assumption is not like, oh, they're just enjoying their life. The assumption is like, they probably work remotely or, or are freelancers or run their own business, right? You walk around Williamsburg and there's like signs, I remember that was like hustle culture, something, something. It was like a Fiverr ad. And I mean, yeah, so, in New York, you walk around and you see ads glorifying how hard you work. And then here in Denmark and also in Germany, in Berlin, you'll just notice people like kicking back at 2 p.m. on a summer day with a beer. It's, it's nice. And the thing is, it's that it's not just about the cultural aspects, it's also the regulations. It's really, might be illegal, definitely frowned upon here in Denmark and I think around Europe, if you reach out to an employee or really probably anyone who works with you about work or really anything at all. And the Danish Holiday Act protects people in terms of their holidays. It gives them and guarantees them five weeks of holiday. So there's also these regulations that are in place to make sure that people have a good quality of life. They have a work-life balance. And here's the thing. There's also pensions that a lot of people have here. It's automatic and you also you can have private pension. You can also join a union which protects your rights. It helps negotiate salaries for you, make sure that you get the salary that you deserve. It also protects people's working life quality. And there's just other things, again, like healthcare. So regulations that ensure that you're able to go out and enjoy yourself, enjoy that work-life balance. You know you don't need to always be killing yourself over work. And that's something that I'm really taking notes on here. So work-life balance is something to, 
to really celebrate. And I do agree as an ex burnout from New York City that we don't always need to prioritize work. And that's coming from someone who loves his work as a business coach. I really enjoy the people I get to work with. I enjoy all the things that I do. And I know that it's important for me to protect my peace and important for me to get that rest because that's also how I'm gonna be able to sustain myself and show up. And also make sure I have time to eat the Danish strawberries in the summer. It's the best. It, honestly, it's something you have to come here to experience. So, you know, all my friends watching this, Come visit me, come visit me and just, and enjoy the work-life balance with me. Come, come hither. Finally, point number three is accessibility. Here in Denmark, people love their bicycles and it makes sense because it's so easy to get around with your bike on the perfect bike lanes, onto the metro, up and down the coast, wherever you wanna go to, it's accessible and this has really improved the quality of life. Copenhagen especially seems to be operating under this principle of a 15 minute city, which is an urban design concept that is a thing you can Google. And it's something I'm becoming more interested in, especially living here. The 15 minute city basically means that all of your basic amenities, doctor, school, friends, places, parks, things like that, cafes, are 15 minutes away from you. I don't know if it's by bike or by walking, but honestly, I can get around anywhere in Copenhagen within a 15 to 30 minute bike ride, which is pretty awesome. There's so much to be said about proper biking infrastructure. First of all, if there's good bike lanes then more people tend to bike, which is great. It's cost effective for that individual, but it also means that there's less cars in the city center, which means that there's less pollution and also less noise which is again really great for people like me who come from uh, living in New York City who is like so sensitive to noise now. I don't, I don't really know how I did it in New York City where it's like super loud. There's always things happening around you and in your ear. Another thing is when you have accessibility by bike and metro, you're able to go to job opportunities, you're able to go get support, go get resources. And unfortunately, this isn't really the case everywhere in the US. Depending on where you live, depending on which neighborhood or economic status you have, you are basically capped off from opportunities, job opportunities, resources, doctors, things like that. You need to have a car, you need to have money. Some people just live too far and can't get to a good grocery store. It doesn't make sense for them to take that bus one hour to go to the doctors or try to go get that job three hours away. By making sure that everybody has access to everything they need within their vicinity, it ensures that people all people have access to resources, support, and opportunities. And I think that's generally a principle that can be adopted in the US and probably most places in the world that don't have that yet. Obviously, you know that US is a very car-centric uh, country. So for me, again, if I'm comparing the US and Europe, I really enjoy having that as the way that we get around. Speaking of getting around, not only is it easy and accessible to get around Copenhagen proper, but it's really easy to go up and down this island called Sealand, uh, where Copenhagen is. And also because there's so many great private and public options, I can pretty much go anywhere in Europe in a way that I wouldn't even feel like I can in the US. And the cool thing is it, the pricing just seems to be very accessible and the culture, it seems to me, it's like everyone does it. It's so casual. So it also feels very possible for me. Whereas in the US, I don't know, when I was living in New York City, the idea of going to visit my friend in Washington DC, unless like they're a really, really good friend, felt like something I didn't really want to do. Whereas here, having lived in Berlin and now in Copenhagen, I actively am planning to go visit my friends in Copenhagen. I'm actively planning to go to Barcelona, to go surfing in Portugal, to visit my friend in Helsinki, to go check out London or, or Dublin or really anywhere else because you can find tickets, like you can 
you can go to Madrid under 45 or $50 if you plan it correctly. And that's also one of the things that I was really excited to do when I moved to Europe was to travel. It's also the reason why I've designed my life and my business in a way where I can be location independent and I have a lot of flexibility. Because one of the beautiful things about traveling, again, improving that quality of life, is when you go out to different countries, you really feel like you get to see, hear, think differently, eat do new foods, do foods, new foods. You can also, you know, it's just like a whole different world out there. And you get to meet so many different people with so many different lifestyles and perspectives. And I think this is something that's really important for all of us to grow as human beings. All right, so obviously there's no place like home. I do miss US and I, it's like I'm planning on going back, but I'm not planning on moving back. Yeah, I mean, one thing I've really realized and take away from moving around so much is that every place has its pros and every place has its cons. But again, it really comes down to what do you need right now in your life? So if you're planning on moving to Europe or somewhere abroad or you're already here and you're thinking about should I stay or should I go, I would just ask yourself, what's most important in my life right now? What do I need right now? And for me, I want this version of quality of life. I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for me. I really enjoy the friends I'm making here. I love the fact that I can travel around. I love the fact that I feel safe. I feel like my taxes actually pay for something and all of the goodness. So I'm really excited to uh, be a little bit more consistent now that pandemic is maybe slowing down. The endemic is here, maybe knocking on wood and I can travel around and I can make this channel all about experiencing things as a person who lives around, abroad from the US, who has his own business and just going on adventures and seeing who I meet and what I can learn from those experiences. And if you're interested in that kind of content, then please hit that subscribe button or smash that like button. Uh, cringe. Um, <laughs> But you know what to do. Uh, otherwise, hopefully I'll pop up in your newsfeed sometime and we'll see each other again soon. All right, bye.